Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for your word. It is the truth. We do receive it, written in our heart, written in our mind, and we thank you for the revelation of it and for all that you bring forth this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated if you would. This morning we're going to share with you on the subject of the necessity of obtaining counsel from the Lord. The necessity of obtaining counsel from the Lord. Every person must get the counsel of God. Isaiah chapter 11, verse 1. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. That's all pointing towards Jesus, who is the branch, and he's the one that came from this root. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. Notice the spirit of counsel is one of the spirits that rests upon him. And shall make him of quick understanding the fear of the Lord, and he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. When you have the counsel of God, you will not be judging after the things that you see, after what you feel, or in the natural realm, after the sight of your eyes, or after just the things that you hear in the outer ear. The spirit of counsel is one of these six spirits that are listed here that are to be upon every single one of us as you now are in Christ, and the Holy Spirit is the one who brings the revelation of all these things, of bringing wisdom, understanding, might, knowledge, fear of the Lord, also of counsel. He will bring the counsel of God unto you. We see in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, For unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Again, this is speaking of Jesus. And notice he is the Counselor, and the one who is the Counselor that does this in an ongoing manner to affect our life. This happens to be a participle active mood, indicating that this is an ongoing action. He will counsel you continually to show you the things that he wants you to do. Now when we get counsel, we gotta make sure it's coming from the Lord. In Proverbs chapter eight and verse 14, he said, counsel is mine. You're gonna get it from God. You're not gonna get it from man. You're not gonna get it from the world. You're not gonna get it from your own, your own self or from, from anything, any other source but from the Lord. And it's always going to be in line with his word. The counsel that God wants to get for you is that you are going to seek him and receive it from him. It's not going to be another's opinion. and You don't seek ungodly counsel from the world or anything that's contrary to the word. We want to get the counsel of the Lord. Well, how does he do it? How does he bring forth this counsel? There are some important things that you must understand to see the counsel of God come to you. In Psalms 32, verse 8, he said, I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way that thou shalt go. I will guide. This word guide here is the word ya'atz, which is this word for counsel, primary word, translated counsel or counselor, as you see down here in the usage. It's indicating how he counsels us with his eye, his eye is upon us. So how is he going to get us the counsel? First, he's going to instruct us, teach us. You've got to be instructed. You've got to be taught the word of God in the way that you shall go. And when you're taught that, then God will counsel you, which will produce the guidance for you to walk in the way of the Lord. And his eye will be upon you as you are following his ways. In Psalms 119, Psalms 119, verse 24. Thy testimonies also are my delight and my counselors. The testimonies of the Lord. When it talks about the counselors, this has actually got two Hebrew words behind this. This is the word enosh, which is the word for man. And there's the other word underneath it, the word atza, another word referring to counsel. There's two main words for counsel that we see in the Hebrew. So this is why it's, Young's brings it out, the men of my counsel as such. 
It's like there's men of counsel that are speaking to you. And how are they doing that? Through past men that have been godly men that have walked in the ways of the Lord and got the counsel from God. And their testimonies that they have given forth are the men of counsel unto you. The testimonies are his delight and his counselors. So you're going to be counseled through the testimonies of others in the word of God, how they have walked and how they have heard from the Lord and followed him. And we'll be seeing this at a later time in another session about those that did take heed to his counsel and those who did not take heed to his counsel and the repercussions that occurred because of that. But when it speaks of the testimonies, God's testimonies, and when you look this up and study this out, especially in the theological word book of the Old Testament, it points out that they are laws given, warranted by God that they are true. God's testimonies are his laws. They're given by God. They are warranted or declared that they are true. There is delight. They are like men of counsel to you from people that have taken hold of them in the past and acted upon them. Another thing that's important to get the counsel of the Lord, Isaiah chapter 25, verse 1. The Lord, thou art my God, I will exalt thee, I will praise thy name, for thou hast done wonderful things. Thy counsels, the counsel and vice, purposes that he has for you, of old are faithfulness and truth. He is faithful. And he will always perform his word and carry out what he tells you to do. And his truth, of course, which is the word of God. So the word are these counsels of old that are faithful and are true. And God's word is absolutely faithful. It's reliable. You can absolutely know that he's going to bring it to pass. It's dependable. You can be sure that he is going to bring it to pass. So counsel is going to be based on the word of God that you know is faithful. It is the truth. It's dependable. It is sure. And he will absolutely bring it to pass in your life. We see this further shown forth when we see what it speaks of in Proverbs chapter 22, verse 20. Have not I written to thee excellent things in counsels and knowledge? He's already given us his counsel through the things that he's written. It brings forth his counsel as well as the knowledge of God that I might make thee know the certainty of the words of truth. His counsel and his knowledge is brought to you to make you know the certainty of the words of truth. That God's word is certain, that he will absolutely bring it to pass. So whenever you get God's counsel, you receive his word. You are to know for a certainty that he will bring it to pass. So the counsel of God is God's word, the truth. He's going to absolutely perform it. In fact, over in the New Testament, in Acts chapter 20, in verse 27, here he's speaking about how he declared all of the Word of God to them. And he calls it the counsel of God. Acts 20, verse 27, he says, For I have not shunned to declare you all the counsel of God. <laughs> God's Word is the counsel of God unto you. It is directing you, showing you what to do. If you're going to get the counsel of God, it's always going to be in line with the Word. The Holy Spirit will bring revelation of it, and it will always point you to those things that are in line with the Word. So through the Word, it's faithful, it's steadfast, dependable, reliable, sure. You're going to know the certainty of the Word of truth and the Word of God that He is going to bring forth to you. Another thing that we see about the counsel of God in Job chapter 37 verse 12 Job 37 verse 12 he says it is turned about by his counsels and it's really talking about all these things about creation about his breath and about the waters and about the clouds and all the things that he's brought into being it's turned about by his counsels, that they may do whatsoever he commandeth them upon the face of the world and the earth. In other words, it's speaking that all the things that he brings into being are being moved by his counsels, and these are his commands unto them. Well, that speaks to you and me, that his counsels that are given to us are his commands to us. And these commands that he gives unto us 
are those things that he has given unto us that he is going to bring about in our life. So the commands of God are his counsel to you. This is why we need to receive God's word as a command and do it and carry it out following the New Testament commandments, of course, that we are under. In Proverbs, we see another scripture that shows an important point about being able to get the counsel of the Lord. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 5. Counsel in the heart of man is like deep water, but a man of understanding will draw it out. So where's the counsel going to come? It's going to come out of the heart. But what's got to be in the heart? The Word has to be in the heart. And how do you get that? Because as the Word gets written in your heart and you do it, God will impart spiritual understanding to you. The spiritual understanding, because of you hearing and doing the Word, produces God's counsel in your heart. So, again, we see something else. This is having spiritual understanding in the heart. And remember, you get knowledge through hearing the Word revealed by the Holy Spirit. Then you do it, and it imparts spiritual understanding. Knowledge is pleasant to the soul. It's of the soulish realm, while understanding is of the heart. God puts his understanding in you, and it's like deep water on the inside of you. So you're going to draw it out of all the inside because the Holy Spirit's going to speak to you from the Word in your heart and bring it up to you. It'll be the counsel of God coming to you. That's why you pay attention to the things that come up to you from your heart on the inside of you that are in line with the Word. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 5. A wise man will hear and will increase learning, and a man of understanding shall attain or obtain wise counsels. So to obtain the counsel of the Lord, it tells us first we need to hear His Word. Then we need to learn the Word. We talked about how we learn it by putting it in operation. Not just we heard it, we learn it, we get it in us, we know it, we walk it out, it becomes a part of our lifestyle. And as you increase in that, and you, of course, will gain spiritual understanding as you're doing what the Word says, and that man is the one who's going to attain or be able to obtain and acquire and possess wise counsels. So hearing the Word, learning the Word, doing the Word consistently to produce the spiritual understanding, you'll come to the place of obtaining the counsel of the Lord. Another thing that we see related to having the counsel of God, Romans chapter 11, verse 34. For who hath known the mind of the Lord? Or who hath been his counselor? It's comparing one who has the mind of the Lord with being one who is like his counselor. Well, that tells you that having the counsel of God is equivalent to you having the mind of the Lord. In the measure that you have the mind of the Lord is the measure that you'll be able to receive the counsel of God because of the word that comes into your mind. We've got to get the mind of Christ. This comes through the word that you hear. You need to have your mind transformed by the renewing of it, continually hearing the Word of God. And God wants you to come to the place of getting this spiritual mind of the Lord established in you. That will produce the counsel of God in you. Another place where we see something, it's in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 11 and following. In whom also we have obtained an inheritance in Christ, being predestinated according to the purpose of him, it's his purpose for this to have been come to us, who works or operates all things after the counsel of his own will. So the counsel is the counsel of his will that he is going to bring forth in our life. And he wants us to possess all these things. He wants us to possess the promises of God and obtain the inheritance, as it talks about. And here it talks about how we get born again and then we receive the Holy Spirit, the earnest of our inheritance, and how we're supposed to obtain these things. But he's talking about that you and I have been predestinated to see this operation of all things, the counsel of his will, coming forth in our life to do what? To obtain the inheritance. So you need God's counsel of his will if you're going to obtain the inheritance. You're going to obtain it because you're going to follow what he tells you to do according to the word of God, the counsel of his will. It's the will of God that he has, which is, in, of course, in line with his word. 
Another scripture we see related to being able to have the counsel of God, Proverbs 3, verse 32. For the froward is abomination to the Lord, but his secret is with the righteous. Now, this is a little different word. This is the word that refers to like secret counsel that he would bring. Secret counsel revealed is with the righteous. He just doesn't give it to anybody. He only gives it to those that are righteous. Those who are righteous are the ones who are born again and doing righteousness, walking in the ways of the Lord. They don't have unrighteousness in them. They've turned away from their sins. They're walking uprightly before him. So being righteous will be another important factor for you to get the counsel of God. You can seek the counsel of God, but if you're not righteous, he'll never reveal it to you. It's going to be, as it points out, secret counsel, which will be something revealed by the Holy Spirit unto you. Another thing that we see about obtaining the counsel of the Lord, in Exodus chapter 18, in verse 19, Hearken now unto my voice, I will give thee counsel, and God shall be with thee. Notice. As you hear God's voice, however it comes to you through the Word, or you're hearing the Word, or the Holy Spirit speaking to you with a still, small voice, He expects you to hearken to it. That means to obey it. Hear and obey. Hearken unto the Word of God. And if you'll hearken unto what He tells you to do, He'll give you counsel. Otherwise, He just doesn't give you counsel if you're not hearkening, obeying, and walking in line with the Word. Many people do not get the counsel of the Lord because they haven't made a decision to hear and obey God's word. Hearing and obeying God's word shows the fact that you're following his way. You're walking after the way of the covenant. And notice what will happen when he gives you his counsel. Then it says God will be with you. God's going to be with you as the counsel comes to you. The counsel is God directing you in the steps that you're to take so that he will manifest himself to you in your life. Now, as you get the counsel of God, and we see some important things already, we need to be instructed and taught, we're going to be guided by this counsel, the testimonies, the, God's laws that are warranted that they're true, His word that's faithful, steadfast, dependable, the commands that He gives to us, understanding in the heart, because of the word in our heart that we've heard and done, we hear, learn, do, un get, gain understanding, and obtain the counsels. We get the mind of Christ. We get the will of counsel of His will as we follow after His will. We are righteous, walking right before Him. And we hear obey the Word of God, showing that we are following the Lord 100%. God will give us His counsel, and He will be manifesting Himself unto us. In Isaiah chapter 46, Isaiah 46, verse 10. You should have absolute confidence in the counsel of God, as long as it's coming from Him. Isaiah 46, verse 10, declaring the end from the beginning, and from ancient time the things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. His counsel is what he says, pleasure, He pleases to do. And it will stand, it will stand steadfast, it will come to pass. And then he says, calling a ravenous bird from the east, the man that executes my counsel from a far country. Yea, I've spoken it. I'll bring it to pass. I purpose it. I will also do it. Notice it speaks of the one who executes his counsel, which tells us that God expects you to take heed to his counsel and do what he says, not just hear his counsel and then walk away from it and not carry it out. He expects you and I to do the word of God and carry out the counsel of the Lord. Remember, his counsel will stand. It is his pleasure that he's accomplishing this for you as you follow after the counsel of the Lord. We should have absolute confidence in the counsel of God. Absolute. Of course, remember, it's got to be in line with the word. You have to be careful that you do not follow things that you hear that are not in line with the word of God. They are not to be accepted as counsel from God. Jeremiah 32, verse 19. Great in counsel and mighty in work, for thine eyes are open upon all the ways of the sons of men, to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. So God has great counsel to you. Great is his counsel and mighty in work, because he's ready to perform the word that you act on as you hearken to the counsel. 
And he's watching, his eyes are open, remember, on all your ways as you're following it. And everything that you do according to his ways, carrying out the counsel of the Lord, doing what he says, he's going to bring that to pass. He'll give to every one of us according to our ways and the fruit of our doings, implying that you are taking heed to his counsel, doing the things that he tells you to do. Absolute confidence in God's counsel, knowing that he is going to bring forth the things that you do. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 17. Another thing we need to see about God's counsel. Wherein God, willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise, that's you and me, we are heirs of promise, the immutability of his counsel. Immutability refers to, and we look this up, it means unalterable, unchangeable. It's fixed. It doesn't change. God's counsel does not change. He's the Lord. He changes not. It is unalterable. It is unchangeable. In fact, it speaks of this counsel that it confirmed by an oath. He swore by himself because he could swear by none greater. The covenant the declaration that he will perform his word as he brings his counsel unto you. No, it's going to be unalterable, unchangeable. It will not change. So you need to be ready to take heed to it and knowing that God will bring it forth because he's confirmed it with an oath, which means it's a covenant promise that he will bring to pass in your life. Now, when the counsel of God comes to you, you should have absolute confidence to it, in it. And how should you respond to it? Well, you need to respond properly. Psalm 16, verse 7. I will bless the Lord who hath given me counsel. My reins also instruct me in the night seasons. You bless the Lord. You praise and worship Him. You thank Him. Minister unto the Lord who gives you His counsel. Don't ever take His counsel for granted. You should always be blessing Him, thanking Him, praising Him, worshiping Him for the counsel that He gives you. It is counsel from Him that is going to direct you in the right path that He has for you. Proverbs chapter 12 also tells us what He expects us to do, which we've already seen once before, but He see it again here. You and I are expected to hearken to the counsel of God. Proverbs 12, verse 15, The way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but he that hearkens unto counsel is wise. We want to be wise. You hearken unto the counsel of the Lord, then you are going to be wise before him. Now, at the same time that God brings counsel through his word by the Holy Spirit, through the mind of Christ being established in you, through all the things that he's accomplished, the Holy Spirit speaking to you, always in line with the word. The enemy also has counsel. You must understand that he will try to bring his counsel to you, to deceive you, to keep you away from the things of God and to bring destruction in your life. Psalms 31, verse 13. Well, I have heard the slander of many. Fear was on every side while they took counsel together against me. They devised to take away my life. This is talking about what the enemy does. The enemy will slander you. He'll speak against you. People used of the devil will be slanderous vessels of the devil. They'll speak against you. Fear. The enemy will try to bring fear to you. So you will not be in faith. And you will not be in a position to hear it from the Lord. The fearful, they can't win their battles. The fearful, they're going to be giving place to the enemy. And they take counsel together. The enemies will take counsel together against you. They can use multiple means against you. And they're devising to take away your life, your soul. This is the word nefesh referring here about the soul life. So they're trying to get control of your soul. They want to get control of your mind, your will, and emotions. Take it away so it's there, have dominion over you through demons that come into you and start running you in the area of your soul. So this is why you have to watch. You don't respond to anything that they bring. Don't be moved by slanderous statements or fear or enemies' attacks that come against you. But these are ways that they will work against you. Psalms 56 tells us how the enemies will work against us in verse 2. Mine enemies would daily swallow me up, for there be many that fight against me, O the Most High. Many evil spirits are arrayed against you. And remember, your enemies are not people, it's the devil. 
even though he will use people that he operates through at times. Verse 5, every day they rest my words. The demons are trying to get you to speak wrong words. All their thoughts are against me for evil. They bring evil thoughts to you. That's why you got a master taking your thoughts captive, thinking on good things, casting down every evil thought, anything that's contrary to the way of the Lord, that's an enemy's thought coming against you. They gather themselves together. They will work in multiplied ways, multiple ways. They hide themselves. They're not coming up to let you know. They don't want you to know. They want, they want to influence you without you knowing what's going on. They mark my steps. They are watching you, looking for opportunity to get to you. Because what are they doing? They're waiting for your soul. Again, the word nefesh. Why they translate it life before, I don't know, really meant soul. They're waiting for your soul because that's where the battleground is. They're trying to get into you through your emotions, through your mind, through your will, so you'll make a wrong choice or think wrong or respond to emotions or feelings. You cannot go by your feelings. You cannot go by thoughts, anything that is contrary to the Word of God or that's not coming from the Lord. Psalm 71. The enemy has evil counsel to devise against you. Psalm 71, verse 10. Mine enemies speak against me. They that lay wait for my soul take counsel together. Again, they're waiting for your soul. They're waiting to get to you so you'll make a wrong choice or you'll think wrong or you'll respond out of your feelings wrong. And they will take counsel together, saying, God has forsaken them, persecute and take them, for there's none to deliver them. Well, the devil will try to tell you that God has forsaken you and he's not going to be there to help you. He's not going to be there to deliver you. He's a liar. God is not forsaking you. You might have forsaken him, but he's not forsaking you. The Bible says that he will never leave us or forsake us. You could leave him, but he's not leaving you. And he is there to deliver you. He is there to set you free, to rescue you, to bring you out from under the bondage of the enemy. But you're going to have to walk in the ways of the Lord. And you've got to be wise. You cannot let the counsel of the enemy get to you. He's lying to you. Anything that he speaks to you that's contrary to the word, it is not the counsel of the Lord. It's the counsel of the enemy devised against you. Psalms 83, verse 3. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people. Crafty, subtle counsel. This is the word, 5475, that it means secret counsel. Translated secret counsel before. So they take their crafty secret counsel that they, you don't even know what's going on against thy people and consulted, they consult or they are going to conspire. This word also refers to conspiring against thy hidden ones. They're going to try to take crafty counsel. This, they do all kinds of things that you don't even know what are going on. Deceitful. And they're against the people of God. And they will try to consult against you in some manner. These are enemies that are arrayed against you. They have said, come, let us cut them off from being a nation. The name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. They wanted to destroy them. For they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee. They have an alliance. Oh, the enemies will work in a, like an alliance against you. Conspiring against you in some way, consulting together. In the spirit, that's what's going on. It may not be in the natural, but in the spirit, the demons are working together in multiple ways to try to get you. Psalm 64, verse 2. Hide me from the secret counsel. This is, again, this word, 5475. So, from the secret counsel of the wicked, from the insurrection of the workers of iniquity. This word, word means from the theological work, word book of the Old Testament, it really means scheming. The schemers, they'll be scheming against you. You've got to watch people out there in the world that are scheming against you. That's why you need to bind the demons in them. You need to be wise. The secret counsel of the wicked, the, the scheming of the workers of iniquity that would try to get to you to bring destruction against you. Well, God will protect you from those things. He'll hide you from them, protect you from them. And he'll show you what they're up to and reveal the ways, the things that you need to do as you get his counsel. 
as you will see, God will bring to naught the counsel of the enemy. Psalms 140, verse 4, also tells you what they're up to. Keep me, O Lord, from the hands of the wicked. Preserve me from the violent man who have purposed to overthrow my goings. They want to overthrow your goings or your steps. They want to stop your walk from going forward in the things that God has for you. They want to overthrow that and get, get you to turn to the left or turn to the right or go some other direction. Again, this is the enemy who purposes against you to try to bring destructive effects. We see another case. They had wicked counselors that were working continually throughout the Old Testament, which are all a type of the devil who's working continually to try to get to you. Remember, the devil goes about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Ezra 4, verse 5. They hired counselors against them to frustrate their purpose. So the devils will be working to frustrate the purpose of God for you. And there, the enemy has essentially hired them or got a hold of them in some way. They're in the enemy's camp, and he's using them to come to frustrate you. Don't let anything get you into frustration. That's the enemy working against you, because when you get into frustration, you're out of the spirit. You're now in the flesh. You're going to give place to the enemy. And they want to frustrate the purpose of God, all the things that God wants to bring forth in your life. You've got to stay at peace. You've got to stay in the spirit. You've got to be listening to the Lord. Another thing we see, they'll try to deceive you any way possible. Proverbs 12, verse 5. The thoughts of the righteous are right, as you want to be hearing righteous thoughts. But the counsels of the wicked are deceit. They're deceiving. They come to deceive, this word means, in the sense of trying to deceive you in some manner. You cannot allow yourself to be deceived. That's why you've got to check things out in line with the word. Be sure it's in line with the Word of God and also that it will bring peace. Also, it will bring, always bring you in line with the things that God is speaking towards, the, the goals that He has already placed for you. He'll be leading you and guiding you in what He has for you to do. That's why you can't let the devil get you off course. Proverbs 21, verse 30. Look what he says. There's no wisdom nor understanding nor counsel against the Lord. Any counsel that the enemies bring, don't think it's going to be effective or be successful against the Lord. No way. The Lord's counsel will always overcome the enemy's counsel. That's why you can never deal with the enemy in the flesh or deal it in a negative way. Getting angry, getting upset, retaliatory, you know, do it, dealing with it in the, in the, according to your feelings, your mind, or in a natural sense. No, you're going to make a mess of things. You've got to get the counsel of the Lord, which will always be in line with His Word. It will be in line with spiritual law. It will be putting His power in operation to accomplish the things that He wants. There's no wisdom or understanding or counsel that's against the Lord. Nothing will be able to stop His works from coming to pass, as long as you follow it. Now, in Nehemiah, Nehemiah chapter 4, we'll be looking at this later more in detail another time. But in Nehemiah chapter 4, here was what happened. The enemies continually tried to stop them. They conspired against them with all their evil counsel and means to try to frustrate and to stop the purposes which was to build the wall, rebuild the wall. Verse 15, it came to pass when our enemies heard that it was known unto us, because God will reveal the plans of the enemies. God had brought their counsel to naught. Of course, he'll show you what to do so you will overcome all of their counsel. He brought their counsel, the enemy did not. We returned all of us to the wall, everyone to his work. It got him off track for a while. Don't let the enemy get you off track. Get on track in line with the word of God, doing the things that he wants. The enemy will always get you to turn away from the things in the way of the spirit into the way of the flesh. God, though, it says he will bring their counsel to naught. Now, it's amazing. The people out there in the world, they are going to try to come against the Lord. Amazingly. In Nahum, first of all. Nahum, chapter 1, verse 11. There is one come out of thee that imagines evil against the Lord, a wicked counselor. 
There's a lot of people that are even speaking against God today out there in the world, and they're going to speak more and more. Speaking against the Lord, imagining evil against Him, they're going to be taken down. In fact, you're going to see that the whole world is going to be against the Lord before the end comes, because they're going to follow the Antichrist, remember? And they're going to try to fight against Him. Psalms 2.2, 2, the kings of the earth set themselves, and the rulers take counsel together, it's not from the Lord, that's for sure. It's against the Lord, from the devil, against the Lord and against his anointed. They're going to try to come against him. They're all going to be destroyed, remember. The kings of the earth are going to be given over to a reprobate mind. They're going to, a strong delusion is going to come to them because they're going to believe that the Antichrist is God. They believe that Satan is God, and they're going to be totally deceived. They're going to set themselves and take counsel against the Lord. That's why you want to be sure that you never take counsel that is contrary to the Word of God. Numbers 31. Balak was trying to get Balaam to curse Israel. Verse 16. Numbers 31, verse 16. Behold, these caused the children of Israel through the counsel of Balaam to commit trespass against the Lord, the mere matter of Peor. And there was a plague among the congregation of the Lord. The counsel of Balaam. Well, Balaam told them what to do, how they could get to the place where they'd be cursed because they got out from walking in the ways of the Lord. This is back in verse 25. Israel abode in Shittim, and the people began to commit whoredom with the daughters of Moab. He told them, go commit fornication with them. <laughs> that was a big mistake. And they called the people in the sacrifice of their gods. They began to get involved in idolatry. The people did eat and bowed down to their gods. And Israel joined himself unto Baal Peor. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel. See, they couldn't get him to curse him until they had sinned. So they got him involved in fornication, idolatry, and then the anger of the Lord would be against him. And Balaam told him that in order to get the money, because he was interested in the money. And he sold them out. Because he couldn't curse himself, of course. But he could tell them what would happen so they'd get cursed. That's why you've got to make sure that you don't follow any enemy counsel or anything that gets you into sin. Otherwise, you're on the enemy's territory and judgments will come. You will have destruction come upon you. In their case, because of their sin, they had all these plagues that came upon them. Over in 1 Chronicles chapter 10, Saul did not get the counsel of the Lord or ignored the counsel of the Lord. And what happened to him? First Chronicles 10, verse 13. So Saul died for his transgression, which he committed against the Lord, even against the word of the Lord, which he kept not, and also for asking counsel of one that had a familiar spirit to inquire of it, and inquired not of the Lord. Therefore he slew him and turned the kingdom unto David, the son of Jesse. He made a big mistake. He didn't inquire of the Lord. He didn't try to go to God. He went to other sources. Remember, what was he doing? He listened to the people. He was listening to the people. And we'll look at this later on, how he listened to the people. He blamed the people, you know, for why he did the things that he did. And he didn't follow through what God told him to do. And also, here he's asking counsel of one who had a familiar spirit. You don't ask somebody, uh, you don't ask the devil or anybody who ha operates as some, some in a fortune teller or a familiar spirit of any counsel whatsoever. This is also important to realize in the area of deliverance. There are those who have asked demons in people for counsel for what they are in order to cast them out. That is a mistake. We've already pointed that out in the past. We do not count, ask counsel of a familiar spirit if a spirit is familiar when it's familiar with the person that knows them so they can give you information. And inquired not of the Lord. He didn't inquire of the Lord. We should totally rest upon the Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us and direct us in things. What happened to him? He got slain. He turned the kingdom into David. We can never look to the devil for anything. We can never look to any other source. You know, he's the God of this world. We can't look to ungodly counsel from the ways of the world. And we certainly 
cannot be listening to the people, which is what Saul did, what they wanted, over the counsel or the direction, the commandments of the Lord. We've got to do what God says. Otherwise, judgments come. And that's exactly what happened to him. He died because of it. He got a judgment coming upon him. Psalms 5, verse 10. Destroy thou them, O God. Let them fall by their own counsels. By their own counsels. Instead of getting God's counsels, you fall. You don't want your counsel. You don't want man's counsel. You don't want any counsel inspired by the devil. You only want counsel that's coming from God. It says, cast them out in the multitude of their transgressions, for they rebelled against thee, because they didn't seek after God for counsel. God expects us to seek after him to get the counsel of the Lord. What happens if we don't get God's counsel? We see some already here. We'll see some more. Or we don't act on it the way we should. Deuteronomy 32. Verse 28, it says, For they are a nation void of counsel, neither is there any understanding in them. Remember, how do you get counsel? Because you get spiritual understanding in you. A nation that doesn't have spiritual understanding will be void of the counsel of the Lord. Oh, that they were wise, that they understood this, they would consider their latter end, because without the counsel of the Lord, they're going to get destroyed. That's why we continue to pray for this nation to come to repentance and get to get right and for righteousness to come forth so that we can be a nation, one of the nations that are going to be saved in these last days. Verse 35. To me belongeth vengeance and recompense. Their foot shall slide in due time. For the day of their calamities at hand, the things that shall come upon them make haste. This is the curses that are going to come upon them because they didn't get the counsel of the Lord. They're going to, their foots are going to slide. For the Lord shall judge his people and repent himself for his servants when he seeth that their power is gone and there's none shut up or left. Judgment is going to come upon those who will not walk in the ways of the Lord. Their foot would slide, calamities, destructive things, they were void of counsel, they had no understanding, and all kinds of judgments would start coming. You need to understand God is a righteous God. He says, see now that I, even I, am he. And there's no God with me. I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. Some people say, I don't understand that. How can God be one who kills and makes alive? Judgment. Those that are going to be saved are going to be alive. Those that are going to be wiped out in the end are going to be killed, aren't they? Out of righteousness. Remember, God only does things in righteousness. So if we are right with him, then of course we'll be blessed. If not, then judgments of some sort will come upon us. In, Judge, in Joshua chapter 9, Joshua chapter 9, here is where the Gibeonites came and deceived Joshua and the people. And here when these ones came and they, they wanted to make a league with them so that they wouldn't destroy them because they heard of what Israel was doing to all the enemies. They were destroying them all. And the Gibeonites, they came and they lied to them. They said, here's our, our bread that's all dry and it's all moldy. Here's our bottles of wine that were filled with new. And our garments and our shoes have become old by reason of the very long journey. They, they brought forth, we came from a long, old, a place far away. The men took of their victuals and asked not counsel at the mouth of the Lord. They didn't seek God about this. Just because someone appears a certain way doesn't mean it's right. You've got to get the counsel of God. Yeah, they appeared a certain way. Oh, these guys there must be poor old guys from far away. They were liars. They were from right next door. They were deceiving them. You can't trust anybody without getting the counsel of the Lord because it appears a certain way. They didn't ask counsel of the Lord. So what did Joshua do? He made peace with them. That was a mistake. And he made a league with them. He made a covenant with them to let them live. What a mistake. And the prince of the congregation swear unto them. So that's when, at the end of three days, that's when they found out that they were their neighbors. They got deceived. Why? It looked like they, were, what, they portrayed a certain thing. But you can't go. Remember, 
Jesus does not judge after the seeing of his eyes or the hearing of his ears, only after the Spirit. You've got to discern things correctly. They were their neighbors. They were lying to them. They were deceiving them. You've got to get the counsel of the Lord on things. Do not be moved by the things that you see. You need to hear from the Lord. And you also got to watch that you don't take counsel. It's ungodly counsel we're talking about. It's contrary to the word from family members of any type, just because they're family. Second Chronicles 22, verse 3. Here it's speaking here of Ahaziah, who was beginning to reign as one of the kings. It speaks of his mother. He walked in the ways of the house of Ahab, which was wickedness, for his mother was his counselor to do wickedly. Did he look to the word? Did he look to God? No. He listened to his mother, who was telling him to do wicked, evil things. You don't listen to someone to tell you to do wicked, evil things. You do not want to be around these ones who are going to tell you ungodly things. He did evil in the sight of the Lord, like the house of Ahab. But they were his counselors after the death of his father to his destruction. What did it bring about? His destruction. You are going to pay a price if you take wrong counsel. It will bring destruction. We've got to make sure, just because they're your family. You better check it out in line with the Word of God. Family will try to do all kinds of ways to manipulate you and tell you all these things and make, try to get you to respond out of the things that are not what God wants for you to do. Job 18 verse 5, Yea, the light of the wicked shall be put out, and the spark of his fire shall not shine. The light shall be dark in his tabernacle, his candle be put out. The steps of his strength shall be straight, strength shall be straightened, and his own counsel shall cast him down. His own counsel. That means your own counsel will cast you down if it's not in line with the word of God. You can't follow your own counsel. This is why you always got to think, what does the word say? Is this in line with the word of God? Have you sought the Lord to find out, is this the right thing to do? And God will give you a peace on the inside of you if it's the right thing. Of course, remember, Job, he was off track. Job 38, verse 2, where the Lord spoke to Job out of the whirlwind, and he said, Who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? God's counsel was darkened in his life. He, couldn't, he, didn't, he didn't have it before him. It was brought to him, but it got darkened. Why? Because he was without knowledge. He was following contrary to the way of the word. You've got to get the knowledge of God. You darken any counsel from God by his word if you don't have knowledge in line with the word of God. You cannot cast it aside. You also can't be listening to ungodly counsel. Psalms 1.1, Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. Do not receive counsel from the ungodly. It's amazing how Christians will go to secular counselors for in, for, to help them on all kinds of different things. And they're telling them things contrary to the word of God. What a mistake. You do not go to secular counselors. You go to someone who knows the word. You walk in the counsel of the ungodly, it will deceive you and take you down a path of destruction. No, God wants you to get the right counsel. In verse 6, it says, The Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly from the ungodly counsel will perish. It will lead you down a path of destruction. Psalms 13, verse 2. This is an important scripture to take note of. How long shall I take counsel in my soul, having sorrow in my heart daily? How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? He's complaining to the Lord, essentially. He starts out and says, How long without forget me, O Lord? He didn't forget us. Forever? How long wilt thou hide thy face from me? Well, as long as you're in sin, that's how long. How long shall I take counsel in my soul? Guess what? This person was taking counsel in their soul. Now, that's a mistake. You don't take what's your soul, your mind, will, and emotions. What's that? How you feel, how you think, and what I want to do, my choices. Do you take counsel from me, what I want to do without getting it from the Lord? No. How about your feelings? 
Your feelings will deceive you left and right. That's the voice of the flesh. How about the thoughts that come to you? Thoughts can, you can have thoughts from the flesh, from the mi a mind that's not thinking correctly, not renewed in the area of the Word of God. Your soul, you don't, remember, we destroy the soul realm directed life and we walk after the Spirit. He's taking counsel in the soul. Never take counsel from thoughts, desires, feelings that are contrary to the Word of God. You will be deceived big time. And now it's also, why did he get this? Because he had sorrow in his heart daily. Obviously, he didn't guard his heart. Are we to have sorrow in our heart? No. We're to have peace in our heart. Sorrow's coming from the enemy. Sorrow needs to be at sadness and feeling sad, depressed, grief, anguish, you know, all this negative stuff that's in your heart. And he had it daily. That meant day after day. That shows you the fact that he wasn't doing right continually. He's listening to the enemy, working at him through the soulless realm and through his hurts, his wounds, his damage, his grief, his sorrow that came into his heart daily. If you've been through hurts, wounds, damage, emotions, and you got a bunch of garbage in your soul or in your heart that's talking to you, bringing thoughts to you, bringing feelings to you, whatever it might be, from things you've heard in the past, whatever, and you take counsel from that, you're going to be listening to the enemy. You're doing the wrong thing. And he thinks that the enemy being exalted over me, well, he's given place to the devil left and right. Never take counsel from your soul or anything that comes out of your heart that is not in line with the word. You say, well, I thought our heart's the inner man on the inside. He is, but you can have evil in your heart. You can have doubt in your heart. You can have sorrow in your heart. You can have bitterness in your heart. That's why the Bible says, guard your heart with all diligence so you don't let all this evil stuff come in you on the inside of you. Another one we see, Psalms 81. Many people make a big mistake and they just respond out of whatever they feel or whatever they think or whatever, oh, it sounds like a good thing, I think I like to do that, out of their will. And they may, they, Did you find out whether this is the Lord wanting you to do it? Is it in line with the Word of God? Is this the counsel from the Lord? Is this what He's directing you to do? We've got to find out. Psalms 81, verse 11. But my people would not hearken to my voice. Israel would none of me so I gave them up to their own hearts, lust, and they walked in their own counsels. You know, God will let you choose your way. He has set before us life and death, blessing and cursing. He tells us to choose life. But if, you, if he's brought his counsel to you, and the word of God, which he has, and then you don't even look to the word, or you don't even listen to what he tells you to do, or you don't hearken to what he's told you to do, and you, someone else, you don't do this or whatever, all, and then you go and do it, <laughs> you're walking your own counsels, you're going to see the destructive effect. Gave them up to their own hearts, lusts, and they walked in their own counsels. He said, oh, that my people had hearkened unto me, and Israel had walked in my ways, if they just had listened, if they just hearkened unto the counsel that was given to them, if they'd hearkened, listen and obey. I should soon have subdued their enemies and turned my hand against their adversaries. They would have come out of that instead of falling into the trap and seeing the enemies bring destruction against them. So, you've got to watch. Remember, your heart can have its own lusts. Inner man can have and this lust here. It's interesting. It means stubbornness, hardness, in the sense that I want what I want instead of being supple and yielded to the Lord. God wants us yielded to the Lord, have a heart that's yielded to Him, ready to obey the thing that He wants. And again, you cannot follow your own counsel, your own plans, your own ways that you want to follow after. Psalms 106. These are all tremendous hindrances that the enemy brings. Psalms 106, verse 13. They soon forgot His works. They waited not for His counsel. I want you to tell me what to do. I didn't hear anything, so I'm going to go and do what I want. <laughs> they didn't wait for his counsel. They just they want to know now, you know, kind of thing. Instead of waiting on God and for him to show them what to do. They didn't wait for the counsel of the Lord. Uh, they lusted exceedingly in the wilderness and tempted God in the desert and went off their own way. You need to be waiting on the Lord until you hear from him. 
until you hear from him, you haven't heard the counsel of the Lord yet. You get in the Word. You listen. The Holy Spirit will speak to you. He'll bring revelation. Remember when those guys in the book of Acts, and we'll see this later, but they're going to preach the gospel and they're going to city to city, and they wanted to go into one place, and the Holy Spirit said, no, suffered them not. Another place, and no, not supposed to do that. Well, they had to wait on the Lord, and finally this guy from, he had a vision of Macedonia, he had, come over here. And so they knew where they were supposed to go and preach the gospel. They just didn't say, well, we're just going to go wherever we want to go. No, they waited. They responded to the Holy Spirit, and they just continued to kind of wait on him until he showed them what to do. God wants you to be not so quick to want to do something, because I want to do it, you know, instead of waiting for the counsel of the Lord and being sure you're getting the directness, the direction that he wants. Uh, they tempted God in the desert. He gave them their request. God will let you choose your way, remember. You can never say, I wonder why God allowed me to do such and such or whatever because that wasn't God's counsel. Because you didn't listen to him or wait for him or receive it. He'll let you choose your way. He's not going to usurp authority over your will. He wants you to seek him. He will bring it to you if you will wait on him. Okay, they got leanness, lean, leanness into their soul. It'll have quite an effect against you. Verse 43, many times did he deliver them, but they provoked him with their counsel, and they were brought low for their iniquity. That's the guy who gets delivered, and he goes back into it. Gets delivered again, goes back into it again, again and again. I, I want to do it my way. You know, they keep, instead of listening to God and following what he tells them to do, they're going to try all these other ways. It doesn't do any good. You're going to be brought low for your iniquity. There will be judgments that will come. We cannot allow this. We've got to really get submitted, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> submitted unto the Lord. Psalms 107. Psalms 107, verse 11. Because they rebelled against the words of God and they condemned or despised and spurned the counsel of the Most High. When we don't receive what His Word says, we essentially rebelled against Him. And we have condemned, essentially, or, you know, just set aside, spurned, the counsel of the Most High. God wants us to receive it. Therefore, He brought down their heart with labor, and they fell down, and there was none to help. <laughs> they went down, didn't they? Anytime you don't get the counsel of the Lord means you're walking in counsel other than the Lord, it's going to bring you down. We don't want to fall down anymore. We've had enough times of falling down. We need to eliminate that. Look in Proverbs chapter 1, verse 20. Well, we'll go back to verse uh, 23. Notice what he shows. It says here, Turn you at my reproof. That would be his correction or his counsel to correct you and bring you in the right path to get you to not do something or make a change. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you, and I'll make known my words unto you. If you'll hearken to what he says, then he'll bring revelation to you. But if you don't, what's going to happen? Because I called, you refused. I stretched out my hand, no man regarded. You set it not all my counsel, you set it aside. I like my way instead. <laughs> and with none of my reproof, they weren't correctable. Lots of people aren't correctable today. I will also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. Well, it's coming because of what you're sowing. You sow the wrong thing, you're going to reap destruction. When your fear comes as desolation, your destruction comes as a whirlwind. That's because of the evil that you have given place to. The enemy's attacks now coming against you. When distress and anguish cometh upon you, they'll call upon me, but I will not answer. They'll seek me early, but they shall not find me. Why? They hated knowledge? And they didn't choose the fear of the Lord. You receive the knowledge of God and you choose the fear of the Lord. You know what God's word says is right. You're going to choose it instead of your own way. They were none of my counsel. They despised all my reproof. God wants you always ready to receive his counsel and his reproof. Therefore, they shall eat the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. Again, we are going to reap whatever we sow. God is not going to stop you from choosing to do something he tells you what to do, but you have to hearken to it. 
Now, if you don't go after any counsel, you're going to fall. Look what it says here in Proverbs 11, verse 14. Where no counsel is, they didn't get any counsel for some reason, the people fall. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety, deliverance. It's going to be salvation, as it says. I mean, God's obviously going to manifest himself to bring forth what he purposes. So deliverance in the multitude of counselors. No counsel, the people fall. There will be quite an effect. Also, what else happens if you don't get the counsel? Oh, you've got these great desires in your heart. Proverbs 15, 22, without counsel, purposes are disappointed. They'll be disappointed. They'll be frustrated. They won't come to pass. Huh. Because we didn't get the counsel of God. We decided to do it our way. We're going to go nowhere. Remember, we've been talking about who do we live unto? We live unto him, not unto ourselves. If you live unto him, you're going to seek him and get the counsel of God, and you won't be doing what you want. Isaiah 30, verse 1. Woe to the rebellious, rebellious children, saith the Lord, that take counsel, but not of me. They took counsel from somebody else. <laughs> you don't want to take counsel from somebody that's contrary to the word. And that cover with a covering, not of my spirit, that they may add sin to sin. They were covering over their own sin, thinking they could just, you know, it wouldn't be any big deal. No. When there's sin, the enemy has place. And these guys were adding sin upon sin. It was not going to be gone away whatsoever. They were taking wrong counsel. That walked to go down into Egypt. Egypt's the type of the world. Well, I'll try the world's ways. How many Christians try God and try the world too? <laughs> They're not thinking right. They're going the way of the world. And if not, ask at my mouth to strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh and the trust and the shadow of Egypt. <laughs> they should have asked of the Lord instead of going to the world's ways, doing what the world wanted them to do. Therefore, should the strength of Pharaoh be your shame and the trust and the shadow of Egypt, your confusion. What do they get out of it? Shame and confusion because all their efforts go nowhere and they fall flat on their face. And they're confused because they don't know what to do. And they're in shame because they see the enemy bring destruction against them. Here's another scripture, Jeremiah chapter 7. We've got to get the counsel of the Lord by seeking him. Verse 24, they hearken not, but nor incline their ear, and walked in the counsels and imaginations of their evil heart. And what happened? They went backward and not forward. The last thing we want to do is go backward spiritually. But that's exactly what will happen. People go backward and they actually backslide in a measure instead of going forward because they're walking in their own counsels, imaginations of an evil heart. Why? Because they wouldn't obey. They wouldn't hearken. They wouldn't incline there. They wouldn't listen. That old stubborn spirit, you know, prideful spirit, you know, like my way will work. No, your way won't work. We've got to get rid of this I, 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 me, me, me mentality. You've heard me hammering away on this forever. And here's just another aspect of why you see Living unto yourself will take you down. God's way is the only way. It is the only way that's going to lead to victory. It is the narrow way, remember, that leads to life, while the broad way leads to destruction. Hosea 6, 11, 6. The sword shall abide on his cities and shall consume his branches and devour them. That's, just, that's destruction. Why? Because of their own counsels. They got the counsel of God, they would have been able to escape out of all that and get the victory over the enemy. Instead, the sword's coming and devouring is coming because of their own counsels. Your own counsels are going to take you down. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 10. Thou hast consulted shame to thy house by cutting off many people and hast sinned against thy soul. They counsel the shameful thing as Young's brings it out to thy house. <laughs> that wasn't the right thing to bring into you. Cut off many people's sinful is thy soul because the sin in the soul brings you a getting cut off, getting destroyed. This is all the effects of not getting the counsel of the Lord. In Micah chapter 4, 
God wants us to get the counsel of the Lord. Verse 12, But they know not the thoughts of the Lord, neither understand they his counsel. For he gathered them as the sheaves under the floor. This is the sheaves of the fallen grain that are no good after, you know, when you take the fruit out of it, and the grain, you know, and you get the true wheat out of it, and you just cast that aside. They're going to be thrown out. Why? Because they didn't get the counsel of the Lord. They didn't know the thoughts of the Lord. We've got to get the mind of the Lord Jesus Christ. We've got to get the thoughts of the Lord in us. We've got to get our mind tuned in to the things of what God wants for us. God wants us to get things, things that are, He expects us to get a hold of. Psalms 25. If we will get the counsel of the Lord, we will be blessed. Psalms 25, verse 14. The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him. Well, the guy has the fear of the Lord. Remember the guys didn't choose the fear of the Lord or the knowledge of God? That's how they were walking after their own ways. and They rejected his counsel. When you follow God's counsel, you're choosing the fear of the Lord. And he will show them his covenant. This is the secret. This is the secret counsel. The word sowed again. The secret counsel of the Lord is with those that fear him. The fear of the Lord is also important for you to get the counsel of the Lord. You know you got to find out what God wants you to do or you're not ready to do anything yet. How many times have people done things without having peace, without having knowing what was the right thing, they just did it because I wanted to do it, you know, or because I felt like it, following their feelings, and it fell flat time and time again. No. The secret counsel was with those that fear the Lord. And what will God do? He's going to just, he's going to, all the counsel of the enemy will come down if you'll look to get the counsel of the Lord. Look what it says in verse, the, uh, Psalms 33, verse 10. The Lord bringeth the counsel of the heathen to naught. Their counsel is going to go nowhere and it's going to be brought down. He makes the devices of the people of none effect. The counsel of the Lord stands forever. The thoughts of his heart to all generations. You want to get his thoughts. You want to get his direction. You want to get his counsel. So you will then follow what's right. That's why never think on, believe, act on anything contrary to the word. And you got a master taking your thoughts captive and thinking on good things. You cannot let the enemy get a hold of you. God's counsel will stand forever. And he will accomplish great things in your life. There's many things that we're going to talk about as far as the results of taking God's counsel, which we'll be talking about tonight. One thing you need to know, the counsel of the enemy will be brought down. And you also need to know that whatever the enemy plans against you, it will be destroyed if you will listen to the Lord and do what he says. You've got to follow his directions. Isaiah 54, 17, no weapon that's formed against thee shall prosper. Every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, you shall condemn it. If you do what's right, you will stop the works of the enemy. If you don't, they'll come in and take you down. They'll destroy you. You'll see destruction. You'll see the enemy come in and devour you. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and his righteousness of me, saith the Lord. And you've got to know and have confidence that everything that God says for you to do is right. Jeremiah 29, verse 11. Look at this. He says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord. This is what he thinks. Thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you an expected end, a good expectation, a good outcome, this means. God has good things for you. So anything that wasn't a good thing, it was from the enemy working against you. God wants us to get the spiritual counsel of the Lord. The spiritual counsel of the Lord is going to come because of his instruction, his teaching, and because of his testimonies, all pointing you back to the word that's faithful and steadfast, dependable, reliable, through the commands. Obeying the commands are his counsel to you. Getting the spiritual understanding in your heart because you hear and you do the word. Hearing the word, increasing learning, doing it, getting understanding, getting the spiritual mind of the Lord. Understanding is the counsel of his will. It's always going to be in line with the word, the will of God. 
making sure you're righteous and upright. Otherwise, it's not going to happen. If you're walking in sin, you, you can seek the counsel all you want. It's not going to happen. You've got to be right if you're going to get the secret counsel of the Lord. And also, being ready to hear and obey His voice. That's the one He gives His counsel to. If you're going to say, well, I want to know what you want, to do, want me to do, and I'll think about whether I'm going to do it. <laughs> you're going to hear nothing. You're only going to hear if you're ready to obey what God tells you to do, to follow Him. See, you're living unto Him. You're totally sold out to follow the way of the Lord because you know it's right. Every other way is going to bring you down. And notice, remember, His counsel shall stand. It's going to, he's going to give you according to your ways and the fruit of your doings. He's going to reward you for the obedience to the counsel of the Lord. You're to continually hearken to it and bless Him and thank Him for it. Same time, you got to understand the enemy's counsel. And we went through all that. He slanders you. He brings fear. The demons will work against you, speak against you. They're waiting for your soul. They'll lie to you, tell you lie after lie. Always cast them down. they got their secret, crafty, cunning means conspiring against you. They try to frustrate you. They'll try to deceive you. They'll have, schemes, have their schemes through other workers of iniquity. They'll, their secret counsel will hide from you. They don't want you to know what's going on. They try to get to your mind. They try to get to your mouth. They try to get to anything they can. But if you'll listen to the Lord, no counsel that the enemy has will be able to stand against the Lord. And God will bring all of their counsel to naught if you'll listen to Him. But if you take the enemy's counsel, we already saw, you're going to have plagues, you're going to have judgments, you're going to see all kinds of destruction, you're going to be cast down, you're going to fall, you have calamities, you'll have destruction, you'll, 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 because of having no knowledge, you're darkening any counsel that God's given you, you won't be able to see it. And if you take counsel from your soul, from sadness, depressed, angry, upset, from a heart, sorrow, hurts, wounds, damage, emotions, you're in trouble. You never can receive counsel from that soul or what's in your heart that out of hurts, wounds, damage, emotions. So many respond out of that. You've got to get yourself straight before you're going to make any decisions, that's for sure. Otherwise, you're going to make all kinds of mistakes. God will deliver you. We've got to get God's counsel. God's counsel will always lead you in the right path. The Holy Spirit will always bring revelation to you of it. If you seek his counsel, he will give it to you as long as you meet the conditions, ready to obey it and to hearken to it. Well, we talk, began talking about this. We've got more to talk about tonight. We're going to get into specific things, especially in the word, from those who took heed to his counsel and those who did not take heed to his counsel. And we see the blessings that happened for those who did, and we'll see the ramifications for those who didn't meet the conditions of receiving and getting the counsel of the Lord and the destructive the destruction that came upon them. Say this, Heavenly Father, I thank you and praise you for the word of God. I understand the spirit of counsel is available to me in Christ. And I am to get the counsel of the Lord, which will be in line with his word. I thank you. I am going to come in line with these scriptural principles and do what the Word says to obtain the counsel of the Lord. And I will make sure that I do not fall for the enemy's counsel and be deceived and led in the wrong path that will bring destruction and curses upon me. I will guard myself so that I will only follow the counsel of the Lord. I thank you that your counsel is right and nothing can ever stand against it. It will bring forth your blessings, your promises, and all the enemy's counsel will be overturned and brought to naught. I thank you. I will get your counsel. I will walk in your ways. You will be with me. You will be manifesting yourself, bringing forth your promises, my purposes that you placed in my heart. will not get disappointed and frustrated. Instead, they'll come to pass. And you will bring forth the desires you place in my heart through the Word of God. I thank you. I am going to see the counsel of the Lord 
and the purposes of God come, come to pass in my life because I will get the counsel from the Lord from this day forward. I will not make mistakes and judge by the outward and not ask counsel from the Lord like the Gibeonites that judged after what they saw and they believe the lie. I thank you. I will get the counsel that will be after the Spirit and in line with the Word of God. <coughs> and I will see your blessings come upon me in my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. The counsel.